Good morning. My name's Jenny and I work at Philbrook Museum. Welcome back to another week of Family Art Club. So I don't know if you've peeked outside your windows yet this morning or taken a listen to some of the things that are going on, but right now, at my house at least, it is raining really hard and I can hear thunder and I bet if I went outside I could see lightning. My dog, she is really not happy about the situation, but I thought for today's craft or today's art making activity, um, it would be a perfect day for some to make a twister or a tornado in a jar, especially after our giant, giant, scary storms we had earlier this weekend. So, um, at Philbrook, we are really excited and all about tornadoes um, this week because on this coming Thursday, we are having a special, really fun um, program where it's called Twister with Trav because we love Travis Meyer. He keeps us safe during tornadoes and storms. And we are gonna have a really fun movie night with Travis Meyer on Thursday night. And if you're interested, um, go to our website to find out more. But because we're watching the movie Twister, I also really wanted to make a tornado in a jar with you all. So, as far as things that you're going to need, um, you are going to need a jar from your house, um, and the jar needs to have, be round. It needs to have round sides. This is really important because we're going to be playing around with centrifugal force. Um, centrifugal force is a science term, but it really is talking about um, like circular movement. So you need to have tornadoes move in a circle, they cyclone in a circle, um, and so you need to have a jar that is also in a circle and that will help our tornadoes form. So I've got a clear jar. You, it can be glass or it can be plastic depending on your age. I have this glass one. Um, and you're gonna need water and then some dish soap. So I really like, I feel like Dawn um, is, there's something in the ingredients that I feel like work a little bit better, but I've also done this with um, just clear dish soap because clear dish soap won't tint your water. So if that's something that you um, care a lot about, or you could maybe get the clear Dawn dish soap. I just have blue Dawn, but the clear dish soap won't tint your water. So if you are um, gonna be dyeing your water a color that is that clashes with blue, um, then a clear dish soap is the way to go. And then you're gonna need a little bit of food coloring or liquid water color. I'm gonna do green because what color is the sky when it looks like there's a tornado coming? Have you ever seen it? It looks really greenish. So I'm gonna do green water. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do is I've got this thing of water and I'm not going to fill it all the way up, but I'm gonna fill it right to like this little bump where it starts to curve upwards. And then this is kind of the scientific experiment part. Well, first, actually, I'm going to color my water. So, and you don't wanna use a lot of food coloring because if it's really dark, um, it'll be hard to see your tornado. So more clear or light colored is better. So this might even be a little dark, but I just did one drop, so um, 
you can play around. If you are have access to a sink, like in the kitchen, um, when I made this earlier, I definitely put this together in the kitchen so then I could um, experiment with how much color to use and also how much uh, dish soap to use because it's a little finicky. You would think that you want to use a lot of dish soap because there's something in the dish soap and the water that um, there's an ingredient in the dish soap that kind of makes this film that allows the tornado to be seen. But if you use too much dish soap, it will make your bottle too cloudy to see. So it is definitely trial and error. So I like, when I did this the first time, like I said, I did it in the kitchen. So then I could fiddle around with the exact color I wanted and then also fiddle around and experiment with how much soap I was actually using. So I don't have a, um, a sink right here with me. So if you can see, I'm using very little, very little soap. So the first thing I'm going to do is I added just a little bit of soap. And if you wanted to, you could be done with just water and soap. That's how kind of cool this is. And then you're going to want to go in a, yeah, so that works really good. This is where you can talk about centrifugal force. So if you go in one direction really hard, you might look a little silly doing it. I bet I do. And probably faster than what I just did. You can experiment and a tornado will show up. So I can see just a little bit of a tornado up here and the harder you spin it, and the faster you spin it, it'll go all the way down. So that is a science challenge for you today. Now, if you want to add, from there you can add a little bit of like debris, like there's a tornado just moving things around. Also by adding a little bit of things, you can see the movement of your water more. So I'm gonna add a little bit of really fine glitter. I'm just gonna add a little bit. I have this pretty blue color. Grownups, I know how you feel about glitter. So if you don't wanna use glitter, that's fine. Um, or if you want to be the one to put the glitter in, that's another good option. I have this confetti. It's a kind of like a mylar. This is from one of our art camp at home projects actually, um, or a couple of them. It is a lot easier to manipulate and easier to clean up. It's this really pretty confetti and it's really lightweight. So I think it'll be really good. It'll look like kind of just this um, debris because it's all different shapes and sizes and colors and it looks like foil so can you see that it's this really pretty confetti glitter and it's pretty chunky like some of the let me see if I can find a larger piece they're all different size they're all different sizes, but like you can see on my finger, they're like pretty chunky pieces. Um, some are little, some are bigger. And I just really think it's just super pretty. So I'm gonna put some of that in there. It might stick to my finger a little bit, that's okay. But then you can like easily just kind of scrape it off. A little bit different than regular glitter in that way. Oh, you can see my my glitter is starting, it's starting to fall through the surface tension of the top of the water and it's starting to fall down there. That's pretty cool. And then I have these other things also from our, our art club at home. 
our art camp at home projects. Um, these are like chunky glitter gems. These are probably the easiest to work with because they have a little bit of weight to them individually, unlike the confetti does. So they really like will come off and they're a lot easier to manipulate. So I put some of those in there too. And so by adding this, oh, and then I also have, now this can be up to you, but what, what do you think of when you see a twister, like a cartoon twister? I always think of like cows, like just like mooing as they go around in the twister, like from a cartoon. But I couldn't find any tiny cow figurines, but you can also experiment with, I rated my family's Monopoly game and I got a few houses and hotels. And this is, can be really fun to just drop them in and they'll sink to the bottom, but they'll also, when you get a really good twister going, they will spin with your twister, which is pretty, I think it's pretty funny. So I'm gonna put that on really tight and you don't really need to shake it so much as like, twist it. And if you do it really fast, and it may be that I need to put a little more or less dish soap in mine. Like I said, it's really an experiment. I have done it off camera and it does work and you do get a really cool twister when you do it. Like you have to spit, you have to twist it pretty hard. but it still looks cool. I've got some chunks. You can see how it's a lot easier to see the motion of the water when you have some debris in here. I'm looking at this and to me, it's hard for me to see the really fine glitter actually. And so if I, I can just see the big chunks like the confetti glitter. And so it actually isn't a bad idea to just leave that off. So I've done it both ways, but the confetti glitter allows you to really see the movement of the bottle. So yeah, I think I might need a little more or less dish soap. I might've actually put too much dish soap in this. This is how finicky like this can be because now you can see it's like pretty cloudy. And if you just put a little bit of dish soap, it, you'll get an actual twister that you can see without it being cloudy. But regardless, there's no right or wrong answer. So I'm actually gonna turn this from a twister into a storm in a bottle. So when I was experimenting with this project to kind of figure out how to make a twister in a bottle, I did several different things. I did just water and dish soap, that worked great. I added um, a couple like confetti things and then like a couple of these chunkier, heavier pieces. Um, and that worked great too. And I really wanted to turn it into like actually make a little scene down at the bottom. So like it almost like a snow globe, but it would be a storm. So instead of having it like this, you would have it like this, and you'd have things coming up. And I really wanted it to still make a tornado. And I tried a bunch of different ways, but I settled on the fact that it doesn't need to be a tornado. It could just be a really strong storm. So with this water and dish soap mixture, you can add all kinds of fun things as long as they are, they won't break down in the water. So I created this little um, kind of sculpture. This was really easy. It did take a little bit of help from a grown up because I used hot glue to attach. 
but this is literally just and it'll it sits right in here you can see so if I use hot glue and glued it down I have a little house with some bushes on a hill um, and this is really I made it really easily by molding aluminum foil aluminum foil makes a great like base because it's easily pliable and you can use a lot or a little like all of these mounds were just aluminum foil and then I covered it with um, I used colorful cellophane because that's what I had so here's some pink. You can see my house was pink. Um, I used purple for the door and the windows that you can't probably see unless you get really close, but I actually glued little windows and a door on my house. And then I covered, I like scrunched up the green to make it textured a little bit and then covered the bushes and the ground in green. So I did a couple layers on the on the ground to make it dark. And then I did one or two layers on the bushes to make them lighter so that you could tell. Um, and then I made a tin roof from aluminum foil. So you can do a lot of really fun things with just, um, Cellophane, you can, so cellophane is a lot, used a lot in like packages, like gift packages, or this is like a craft cellophane, but you can use anything that, um, any kind of material that's not going to break down. So I want to use like a fabric or a felt just because it'll get pretty yucky over time, but I had this one in my storm in a bottle and I popped it off to show you but I had this one in here for a, like a week in the window and it was perfectly fine it's looks basically the same as when I made it so but yeah that is a really fun thing you can kind of think of it like a snow globe but instead of snow you're making a storm so then you can just hot glue this onto the lid. I can't do it now because they're both, they're wet, but you can hot glue this onto the lid and then screw it in like this upside down. And that will make your storm in a bottle. That'll be the bottom. And then you can, you'll be flipping it over because this will be hanging in upside down like that. And so then you'll just flip it over like this and you have this really cool scene that you've actually sculpted inside of your bottle. Now, I tried to do this and also make it do a tornado and it didn't really work because I think that my sculpture was interrupting that centrifugal force that I talked about at the beginning of the video, but it still looked really cool, especially if you have like a cool color and you have, um, stuff flying around oh there's a tornado there we go perfect so sometimes i don't know if you saw that that was like the best tornado um if you let it sit and settle for a little bit um it actually will kind of settle together and make and then you can wait like five ten minutes and do it again and it makes a really cool tornado I think it's something about, oh, there we go. Tornado, very cool. If I shook it harder, I could get the houses and hotels to pop up. Sometimes I've seen them where they like actually get sucked up into the tornado and that is really cool. So, um, you can make a tornado with just like this or you could build a sculpture and make a diorama inside of your tornado and that just becomes like a storm in a bottle but it is both they're both really cool looking and I would encourage you all to try them both out um, and then if you are really excited about tornadoes and you want to join us on Thursday for our twister with Trav it'll be a, a really cool fun kind of interview with Travis Meyer about tornadoes and then we're going to watch the 
movie Twister via Net Netflix party. And so if you'd like to join us on Thursday, uh, you can go online to sign up and I hope you have a great week. This is a really fun activity, so let me know how, what you think of it. Um, and you can take it so many different ways. So I'll see you next week. Bye.